Good evening, dear listener. I hope that you've had a horrifying day, and that the tale that I will tell you tonight will leave you with more nightmares than you would have had already. Tonight's tale is called The Basement. It's a sad story about when children meddle in things that they should have left alone. So without further ado, let's begin our tale of misery. The town of Deming, New Mexico appears to most to be like any other small desert town. But the children of Deming know the difference. They know the secret hidden inside the middle school. The middle school, formerly known as Deming Junior High, has been used as a public school in the city for over 60 years. No one is sure when the dark presence arrived in the school, or where it came from, but for generations children have known that it was there. For years parents have misunderstood their children's fears and thought only that they were trying to get out of going to school. It seems that when parents grow up they forget the fear they had felt at the school. The current students know better though. They understand the terror that is waiting deep within the school. I attended Deming Junior High myself. I felt the fear like the other students. But I knew something that few others did. I knew what it was and where it had come from. In 1995, I was in the seventh grade. I had felt an unease in the building throughout my sixth grade year and into my seventh, but it wasn't until a rainy day in late January of 1995 that I found out the secret of the school and knew what it meant to be afraid. My mom was a teacher at the middle school and had taught sixth grade social studies there for years. I'd grown up used to sitting quietly in her classroom after school reading a book on a daily basis while she graded her students' papers. On that day, I was enjoying the sound of the rain as it pounded against the windows of her room. After what seemed like about half an hour of reading, I finished the book and closed it. Seeing that my mom was going to be busy for several hours still grading papers, I told her where I was going, then walked down the hall to the school's library. As I walked down the darkened hallway, I felt myself shudder. Only a few minutes after school every day, the janitors would turn the lights off in the hallway. I wasn't sure if they did it to save electricity, or if there was some other reason behind it. All I knew was that, even on a sunny day, when the lights were turned out, the hallways became nearly pitch black. I walked quickly to the end of the corridor where the library was, fighting my urge to run. Though a part of me felt stupid for the scared feeling that came over me in the hallways, I felt relieved when I reached the library and was bathed in the light of the door's small window. Entering the room, I looked around for the librarian, but realized she must have left for the day. Luckily at the junior high, we had been taught how to check out books for ourselves for situations such as this. I put the horror novel I had been reading into the return bin and began looking down the aisles for a book that would interest me. In the back corner of the library, hidden from view of the front door by a large bookshelf, I found the diary. I had been bent over looking at a horror novel that had caught my eye when I saw a black leather-bound book on the bottom shelf. Pulling it out, I was intrigued to see that it didn't have a title on the spine or the front. Upon opening the cover, I saw the wording inside was handwritten, not typed as I had expected it to be. Reading the first paragraph, I realized that the book was actually a diary. I admit, I'm no angel. I looked around the library again quickly to make sure I was alone before sitting on the floor in the corner with the diary. Having seen the feminine handwriting, my mind raced thinking about the secret that the diary's author might have revealed within it. Inside the front cover was the name Courtney Smith. I didn't recognize the name as anyone I knew at the junior high and was disappointed as I realized that most likely the diary's owner no longer went to the school. Though my hopes of finding out the deep desires of a fellow student were fading, I was still interested in reading what Courtney had written. Looking back on it now, I wish I had put the diary back where I found it and taken the horror novel instead. A date on the first page of the diary 
told me that the entries had started in January of 1966. According to what the diary said, Courtney Smith was a student in the seventh grade that year. From the first few entries, she seemed like a normal 13-year-old girl. From talking about boys she liked to how her parents didn't understand her, Courtney seemed like any other girl her age. I didn't realize it then, but years later, as I look back at it, I realize I felt a strong attachment to her. The entries over the month of January seemed very normal, but in February things changed. Courtney seemed to be growing increasingly unhappy with her home life and her social standing. Feeling that she had problems that were greater than anyone else had to deal with, she began looking toward religion for a solution. Her first mentions of her religion seemed harmless, but it quickly became apparent that she was not practicing Christianity. Courtney explained in one entry how she had found an old black book on demon worship in the school's library. In its words and practices, she said she found a comfort and a feeling of acceptance for which she had been yearning. Over the month of February, Courtney seemed to become more and more obsessed with the black book and her new beliefs. She found herself with a new set of friends who looked up to her as their leader. This cult she started calling her family, and her followers became her children. Even with her new friends, Courtney continued to become more absorbed in her fascination with the demonic rituals. By this time I wasn't sure I wanted to continue reading, but something made me. It was like watching a terrible car accident. I wanted to look away, but I couldn't. Even to the shock of several of her followers, Courtney decided, at the end of February, to hold a ceremony and attempt to summon a demon to do her bidding. It seemed like her infatuation with the occult had driven her mad with power. On the last Saturday of February, Courtney and three of her followers snuck into the junior high. Today the back doors of the school are chained shut to prevent any unwanted entry. But in 1966, the school district didn't see any reason why a student would want to get into the school on a day they didn't have to be there. The junior high is an L-shaped building, whose entrance is in the northeast corner, where the two wings converge. The door at the other end of the eastern wing was where Courtney and her friends entered. Directly inside that door is a stairwell, which leads down to the basement. It was this set of stairs that Courtney took that day. In the basement, the small group found a storage area where unused desks and extra school supplies were kept. The basement also held the large furnace, which provided heat for the entire school during the cold months of the year. I've never been in the basement myself, but Courtney's description was that it was a dark brick room whose only light came from a single overhead bulb and from the fire burning in the furnace. Following her brief description, Courtney ended that entry saying that the group was going to perform the ritual. After that, there was only one entry remaining in the diary. As she wrote her last entry, it was obvious that something must have gone wrong. Her normally beautiful handwriting was jagged, as if she had been rushing to write it. The entry was written later that same day. What have I done? It worked! The demon appeared as the book said it would. But it lied to me. The creature didn't obey me. It wouldn't obey any of us. I'm so stupid. How could I have been so blind? It looked like a man, but its eyes... Its eyes were completely black. It told us we were to be rewarded for freeing it. Then I watched it kill Erica. Blood sprayed everywhere as it ripped out her heart. After that I turned and ran. I couldn't help my family. I couldn't... I could hear their screams as I ran for the exit. I know now that I am damned. Timothy just called a minute ago. He said he was calling from the school and that I needed to go back. I heard his screams as I escaped. I know what called wasn't Tim. 
and I realize that on Monday my parents will force me to go back to the school, and I will probably never return. Deep down, I'm not really scared, though. I deserve whatever happens to me. It's my fault that my family is dead. It's all my fault. I have to get this written, though, to make anyone who reads it understand. According to the book, it is bound to the building. It can't get out. But it will always be there. It will never sleep, and it will never die. It will just be there, waiting for its next victim. When I finished reading the diary, I felt sick. I tried to convince myself that it was some kind of sick joke, but deep down I knew that it wasn't. I went to put the diary back on its shelf, but as I looked down, I found that it had disappeared. Frightened by the vanished book, I jumped to my feet and ran back to the door. Opening it, I hurried back down the hallway toward my mom's room, yearning to be near another person. Steps away from my mom's classroom, I felt like I was not alone. Turning slowly, I looked back towards the library and saw the silhouette of a girl. Neither of us spoke, but I could tell that it was Courtney. I will always remember how her eyes were completely black. That was the last day I set foot inside the junior high after school. The next day I joined the baseball team and was thankful to have daily practice to distract me. Over the years, students have often noticed odd occurrences within the building, but parents never seem to believe them. However, everyone must admit that there has been an enormous amount of tragedy related to one building. From school shootings to mysterious fires at home, an abnormal number of students have died while attending the middle school. While parents might not have an explanation for it, or even think that the deaths are connected, the students know better. Most might not know what is there, but all feel that there is an evil. Something inhuman that has been there for years, and still is. I hope that you've enjoyed my tale this evening. I hope that's left you clutching onto your blanket hoping that it'll protect you from Courtney and the other nightmares that reside within Deming's Junior High. With that, I will bid you a good night. Sleep well, dear listener, and don't let the monster under your bed bite.